So what we've got at the moment is something fairly simple, even though we've had a little bit of variation here with our points, it's still um, pretty even slope. I did kind of platform things out a little bit around the bottom of the building here by just adding additional points and dropping them down two meters below. Uh, let's say that uh, I wanted to get in here and maybe add a retaining wall, put that around this kind of patio area here. Uh, I could do that with just the regular wall tool and this is a good example of where we can use the wall profile. So if I go to my basement level and then just quickly create a standard kind of generic 200 millimeter wall here. And I'll just do this at the back again, kind of mimicking what would happen with the retaining wall in this situation. So I'll just start at the back of the building and extend into this corner and then drag down. And all that creates, of course, is something that looks like this. But because I can edit the profile of this wall, I can have it kind of mimic the slope of that topo surface. I'll make this one at the back a little larger and I'll just do that numerically here in the properties window. So I'll set the top for this at an additional, let's try 600 millimeters and see if that works. So there's the top of my retaining wall and to get this one in the right spot, I'll need a section view so that I can be looking right at this wall. So I'll go to the basement level again and I'll create a section view that just cuts right through that area, giving me a nice orthogonal view of that wall. Uh, good to be in wireframe for this, so I can see the slope of the topple surface behind the wall. And then I'll just click on the wall, edit the profile, and create a new sketch here. You can't use pick lines on the topple surface. Unfortunately, that doesn't work. But all the other tools that you're used to should work. And if I wanted to be a little bit more particular about this junction up here, I could just follow the shape of that wall. And then I'll click. And sometimes when you're editing the profile of the wall, you'll get this little prompt that'll pop up. It's just giving you a little bit of advice about how to create walls and you don't have to pay any attention to it. It's not gonna keep you from making the wall. So there we go. There's our nice matched retaining wall. All right, so some other things that we can do to edit the shape or the topo surface. Um, as we've seen, anytime we click on it, we have the option to edit the surface and that'll just give us access to the points. So we can click edit surface, use the place point tool. And uh, if I needed to have things kind of flatten out around the back, I would just add points, paying attention to this number. Uh, so if you know what elevation you want your points to be at, you can enter that before you start clicking. Otherwise, you can always access them after the fact. If, for example, I had some points in the file on the topo surface that I had to edit, I could just select them and then just change their number over here. Just getting a little bit more variety out of this topo surface. All right, so that's the basic way that you edit a topo surface. Beyond that, you can also change the material um, by using these tools. You have the option to do a split surface, which would actually cut the topple surface up into additional pieces. So let's say that we wanted to do something like a, a driveway. And you can also do a subregion, which would allow you to assign different materials to different parts of the topple surface, but not necessarily cut it up into separate bits. So for starters, let's just look at how we can control the material. It's pretty straightforward. All we have to do is just click on the topple surface and over here in the properties <laughs> window, we'll see that we have an entry here for material. At the moment, it just says by category. A uh, good thing about this is you're not gonna change anything about the type here. So those conventions that we're used to in Revit where we don't tamper with the type unless we make a duplicate, that doesn't really apply here. This will only ever be just an instance. So if we change the material for this instance, we're not tampering with material for any other topo surface in the project. So if I just click here and select material, it brings up my material browser and I can look for something that already exists in the project. Uh, there is an earth material, so for now I'll just click on that. 
But if I want to do something to kind of break this up into different material surfaces, like I said with a driveway, uh, I'd be looking for something like this. So on that same massing and sight tab, there's a tool called Split Surface. If I click on the tool, it wants me to select a topple surface to edit. So I'll click on it, and then I'm back in sketch mode. And what it wants me to do here is to create some sketch lines that will essentially cut this topple surface and divide it up into smaller components. So if I click on the line tool, and let's just say that I've got a driveway that's coming in from the east side here. This comes right in front of my building. And then maybe gets a little wider and goes back to something narrow. Something like that. I could actually click the green check here and it would split this topple surface up into this shape even though I didn't finish the sketch which is a little unusual for Revit. This is one of those cases where you don't have to actually have a closed shape for your sketch. But if I click on the green check now you can see that I have two topple surfaces. So here's the original and here's what I'm calling my driveway. Now notice that that cut shape, that driveway that I've created it follows the original shape. So if I wanted this to be flat, I could click on that topple surface and select edit surface and then I'd have access to all the points that determine the variations in the topography of this topple surface. So if I click on edit surface, select all the points, I could drop them all down to the same number, let's say negative 500, Looks a little high. We'll drop it down to maybe negative 1500. There we go. So now we've got something that kind of splits between cut and fill. So I have my nice flat driveway approach here, a bit of a parking area around the building. And all around it you can see that I've got some gaps now. So what I'll do first is I'll make a new material something that might look a little bit more like asphalt for this. So if I select that topo surface again, at the moment it's set to display with the earth material, but if I change that, I'm not going to change anything about the original topo surface. So all I have to do here is just click on earth. And I don't really have many site type materials in the file at the moment. Most of these are just kind of standard building materials. So this is a case where I would probably want to create a new material. So this little sphere with the plus symbol at the bottom, if I click on the pull down, create new material, right click on the new material and rename it. And I'll call this asphalt. And if I want to have some asphalt like properties, I can find them in the library. And I can access that by clicking on this little button down here beside the sphere and the plus symbol. It opens up the asset browser. And uh, many of these folders contain site materials, but I'll just expand appearance library and select site work. And then I'll just choose one of these uh, asphalt materials near the top. All you have to do is just double click to load up the properties. And uh, I chose the asphalt wet. You can see it's now been loaded into my asphalt material. And I can turn that off. And there's a display of what it'll look like. So I'll click OK. And now what I should be able to see is uh, a different looking material. What I forgot to do when I was editing the material is check this box here that says Use Render Appearance. So that will ensure that whatever the material is set to render like here in the appearance tab, it'll mimic that in this case with just kind of a mid gray value. So that when I'm looking at this in a shaded view, I'll be able to see something that looks gray. So that's the split surface. There we go. Uh, the other option, as I said, is that I can do a uh, sub-region. So if I don't want to have a split, if I don't want to see the gap, like I can see here, which I would have to fix by going back in there and maybe editing some uh, retaining walls, 
I could also just click on subregion. So if I click here and then just create a shape that lies entirely within the bounds of this topo surface, maybe I want to have a little region where there'd be maybe like a little path leading from the building uh, away up off the property, something like this. And maybe I'll finish that off just by closing it here. What this will do is it just creates a region within the original topo surface that can have a different material applied to it. So if I click on that, I'll see that I have access here to materials. So I could click there and then just find something from the library and I'm not going to create a new material for this just to kind of keep things moving along. I'll just uh, choose something from here. And this just just to show you that I can apply a different material. Now what's unique about this is that if I click here, I can edit the boundary, but I can't edit anything about the points and where they sit vertically. Um, this new subregion will just follow the shape of the original topo surface. So if I click here and edit that, this point, for example, if I was to drop that down or maybe move it, notice that as I move it, it's adjusting the contours as I go. And that new subregion is going with it. So subregion just means that you make it possible to edit the material of a certain area. You don't have the ability to change anything about its elevations. Uh, and if you do the other option, which is split surface, that's how you would create an object that you could create some unique elevation numbers for.